I'm not doing a fancy video with any special effects or silly humming in the background. What I have to tell you is important within itself. It's to do with a horror that I have witnessed with my own eyes, of which I have a first-hand account. It is something that I rarely speak about because I have yet to come to terms with the evil which I witnessed. Three years ago, I was in a Rohingya refugee camp. I had helped supply 1,000 families with family packs full of essentials for families of seven people, with a month's worth of supply. I felt that I would have a sense of accomplishment after supplying these 1,000 families. But when we turned up, there was 5,000 families there. So we had to turn 4,000 families away. The line goes behind these trucks. It goes all the way around. It goes behind that truck there. around up and see the camps at the top right at the top the line carries on behind those tents as well there's probably more than 6000 people here the next day i felt more positive because this time we had 5000 meals so once again i thought i may feel some sense of elation that we had helped but 25000 people turned up about thousands and thousands of food packs look behind me the queue just goes not only did we have to turn them away when the food packs ran low, but when desperation kicked in, the military had to intervene. I saw women older than my own mother crawling at my feet begging for a meal as they all fought over a bowl of rice. The horrors of that day meant that the physically strong amongst us, uh, a boxer, fell down crying like a baby. And I myself rarely speak about this because of the impact it had on me. The next day was a medical camp. This day I thought I would be able to help being a pharmacist and that's how I paid for my own expenses ensuring a 100% donation policy. Yes, we provided decent healthcare, but no part of my training in healthcare prepared me for burnt skin on babies because of what Buddhist monks had done to them or a woman asking for an abortion because of what the Myanmar military had done to her. The last day we went to the border and saw people escaping the genocide within moments. When I hugged a man there who had watched his wife brutally murdered by Buddhist monks only 18 days ago, I realised that in the last 18 days while he had been running for this border with his two children, he had not spoken to a single other person. When I hugged him, this was the first time that somebody had offered condolences for his deceased wife. No wonder he didn't let go of me for a while and carried on crying into my shoulder. What I saw in that week was enough to cause me to lock it away, as I could never understand the deep inhumanity which I had witnessed. The other day though, when I heard of a fire in the Rohingya camp of these same downtrodden people. Oh brother, I don't have any idea where my wife and children are. Oh Allah, where are my wife and children? I remembered speaking to them and how they asked me not for the food and medicine which they needed, but asked for a job so that they could earn something and make a living for themselves. Asked for a mosque so their children could get an education. So at the time we funded uh, three mosques and helped them get that education that they needed. But now it's time to help them again. We want the temporary houses and tents to be more fireproof. Now the material is something which is completely out of our control, but what we can do is build a brick wall between each temporary house as opposed to the wood and the sheets that are used now. That would cost us £400. The beauty of this is the people, the builders who would actually be building these houses are Rohingya, so they would be paid wages for it as well within that £400. And these people also lost their personal belongings and their rations. £100 would provide them with a pack of clothing and mattresses, etc., which have been burnt, and a family for a month worth of ration. These people also need water, not the cheap wells that don't go deep enough and run out after a few months, but we need something robust, a deep well. This would cost £660. Finally, we can set up a mosque like they asked for. This would enable them to have the funeral rites that they need and the children's education which they want to give, as well as a place to pray. This would cost £3,000. I'd love to go and oversee this aid myself, but realistically speaking, the pandemic means that this is not possible. I may go in the future, but in the interim, I have had built trusted links last time. So I want to use those reliable sources to make sure that the aid gets there, albeit I'm using a different charity in the UK. You can go to this link and donate now to this appeal. 
Finally, I want to end with the same thing I requested from you last time. These people are forgotten. Share this experience with those you know to raise awareness and make dua for them during this blessed month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.